Hello everybody, thank you very much for tuning in. This is of course your coach and your friend Robert Broale and this as usual is the best show in Eastern Central Africa, south of the Sahara and north of Limpopo. I hear some of you ask, which show is this? This is the All Men Show, a show that takes care, delves into matters men. We want to inspire. We are not looking for perfect men. We are looking for men who want to be better tomorrow than they are today. We have men from different sectors, different uh, walks of life, just to try and have a conversation. Today is not different. We have a great man, a man who many look up to, a man whose journey is very interesting. And please, don't even move from wherever you are, because for the next one hour, a bumper show is what I guarantee. Many know him. Actually, many don't know him as Mr. Amisi, but most of you know him as Frasha, or is it Dakitare? When you pick your intro, you can see it now, you know. Mazia Santi, thank you very much for coming to the show. Thank you, And, and uh, many people know you as Frasha, uh, your, your group, the rapper, yeah. you know, the guy who dresses well. But today we want to get deeper, yeah. just to get to know you, and let's see how you can inspire quite a few people. Tell us something, just who really are you? Um, as I said, I think uh, most people know me from being uh, Frasha, the musician, yes. you know. Ula Jama Mkare, nini, nini. But uh, apart from that, I'm actually a father. I have, uh, my first born is 18 years. My second born is 16 years. And uh, I have a young boy who's six years. And 18, I've been, 16, and 6. Yes, and I've All been right. married for more than 20 years. Um, and so people don't know that side of me because... I've chosen not to not to show my life in you know not to throw my life in in the public scene. All right. Because Abu Sana Sana na pataga most celebrities, uh, and it's I, I don't blame them. It's because of what life has become. They are, it's it's not about music anymore. It's about showbiz. It's right. about your life, what you're doing, what you're driving. And when I was doing music, your life I kuwa. So I chose to to protect my family from from your life iko kuinge. So that I can be exposed only through my music. Absolutely. Yeah. Your gifting and talent. Yes. Now let me take you back. Uh, 16, 18, and 6 years. You have been married for close to 20 years, you say. Yeah. Evidently, you married young. Yes. Now let me take you back Evidently, to I'm old. <laughs> 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 but having said that, yeah. let me take you back to your childhood. How many were you in your family? I know your father was a teacher, your mother is a doctor. Yeah. Tell me, give us a mental picture of your early life. Yeah, uh, I was born in a blessed family of four. Uh, I'm the third born. I have two elder <coughs> brothers, uh, and then I have a sister. Navilo Mesematu, your father was a teacher. He was not. He was a teacher at school and at home. Okay. Na kiboko liko na tembea both both sides. Shule na nyumbani. Shule na nyumbani. Uh, when I was when I was young, I think nilikuwa kichwangu musana. Na if it wasn't for the harshness of my dad, I wouldn't be whoever I am today. Right. Um, and that's that's one of the things that I actually learned from my father that there can be harshness in love. Somebody can be harsh or, uh, harsh to you, but they actually love you and they see your potential. Um, now, so when I was growing up, nilikuwa noma. But I grew up in a very humble uh, place. I was born in Machakos. Mm -hmm. Um, my dad is Luo, and most people don't know. My dad is Luo, my mom is Kamba, and my wife is Kikuyu. So, me and Kenya, Alisi. I don't oh, like okay. saying that uh, I'm what tribe. So, I was born in Machakos, and then we moved to Ati River. Went to Machakos Primary, uh, Township Primary. Uh, it was called Township Muslim Primary School. Right. Ilikuwa shule ya bure ndio. Wana watu wengi walienda uko. Church ilipio, alikuwa, awatu wa mesota soto, alikuwa naendeo shule. And then, they used to go to Machakos, uh, Machakos uh, Primary. Right. Then we moved from there, went to Machakos Boys, uh, Machakos School now. Uh, and tukashugulika tuna mungu wakatusaidia through ups and down. Uh, I think this was a very trying time in my life because hey, nilikuwa na ujuaji mingi sana. Uh, wrong company maybe? It was not wrong company. Ni ujuaji, ni kuona we ni ujuaji. I think... I. There's this thing when you go to schools that you want to prove to people that yeah, we may talk a place flani. Now, at river, your time, you go to Nairobi at river. I love to say, wow, So, 
tulikuwa tunajaribu kuonesha watu sisi ni watu wa thriver so we, we got into a lot of problems right na nilifia kwa hiyo machakos machakos boys was like 10 years nilifia kwa hiyo shule my punishment friend. yeah did you dangle in some things that were not good did you ever try drugs and i'm asking you this question yeah uh, because in this day and age and you know we want to inspire some young boys and ladies for that matter yeah. some young boys and we see them posting on social media taking drugs and puffing and um, people liking and commenting did you ever dangle in those things i did um i will not lie to you i did and i actually overdid it um and there was a point that i think nikwa nikwa from i think from 3 or from 4 I, I almost got expelled from machakos boys uh your time to look at mafuta gama fegi sana ilikuwa there was this uh, cigarette which was called rosta rosta uliko kivuta utanuka mpaka next week it was that harsh <coughs> excuse me and so uh, i think we were got with cigarettes and then tukatumwa home i came with my dad my dad was a disciplinarian my dad used to beat me and beat everybody ule mtu ako kwa hiyo kesi kila mtu anajua babangu um and through that i think those are the things those are the lessons that when i was young uh, i got to learn that you know there are, there are things that i'm not supposed to do even if i have the freedom to do them i'm not supposed to do them right yeah and i'm asking these questions because um, many people and ask almost all my guests this many people see you now yeah. this great man this icon in the creative industry and we go also about you being a physiotherapist you know and and many want to be where you are we are a generation that looks for what to call microwave blessings. Yeah. I want to be fresher, but I don't want to go through the process yes. that he went through. And that's why I'm asking, and I, I, I'm very, very clear about this. But now, people don't know this. Many people don't know this. Mm -hmm. You're actually a physiotherapist. Worked in one of the biggest hospitals in this country. Tell us about that, Johnny. <laughs> because I'm going to so, ask you also uh, how you left that. That, to come. That, uh, <laughs> uh, I think first of all, being for me to become a physiotherapist, I went to MTC in Nairobi and uh, uh, I didn't know what physiotherapy was. I didn't know what physiotherapy was all about. Mm -hmm. um, I'd not even met one physiotherapist. So when my mom told me, you know, this is what I want you to do. And my mom was quite categorical because before that I was doing uh, computer science. Which was your desire? It wasn't, but that's what I... Because your time, you remember that time there was this thing about uh, computers? Computers, yes. Com computers will take over the, the world. Right. So I wanted to know this thing that will take over the world, I can be able to to repair it, I can Absolutely. be able to, you know. And so I was doing that and then my mom told me, you know, there is something called physiotherapy, I need you to go and do it. And my mom is a doctor, so... But anyway, all in all, I got into MTC, I did my... Uh, my physiotherapy diploma, and then I got employed in uh, Aga Khan Hospital. Yeah. Now, the moment I got uh, employed in Aga Khan, that's where the, the problem started. Because at the same time as getting money, I had this passion for music, and I took we were nobody. Your time, I was in Bagana Boni, I was in Bagana Boni, I hit in Bafu 100. So we actually got money for the first time to go to a, to a studio and record. So we went to Ketebul um, Studios right. and recorded our first song, Me, Bonai, and then Nonini came in and Gabu, and we did Silazima, that was our first song. And so fame started now getting to Ujama Metoka Atriva, Machakos, I'm now making money, I have a wife, I have a small kid, I'm trying to raise my family, all of a sudden, fame. And fame is the, what is it drugs, what one on about? Fame is the worst drug you can ever have. Uh, because you feel like a point reaches, you feel like you're, you're everything. Everywhere, everywhere you go, you get free things. I go to a club, I'm given free drinks. If I go to where, I'm given free phones, I'm airtime. Hey. Did that did that get into your head? It did. It was big. Um, I just not going to get a Can fame? Yeah. Because you're a young family at that time. Yeah. Just one child. Yeah. Can fame make you also disown your family? Because I've seen the very many people who have, have been dangled with that. I think fame, as I said, is the worst thing that can happen to you if you don't control it. Right. Um, when, I was, when I was that young, having a, a, a young family, having money, having all this, uh, you know, 
uh, women's opportunities yeah women uh, kwanza madem eh hey, madem ukipata kitu na fem wacha na maze ni moto so karibu at that pote. time yeah karibu mpote and hiyo time karibu na tena wife yangu because and that's why i say marriage for me is not you need to find somebody that that understands you wacha na mapenzi at you i'm in love with this guy love it aishi mahali somebody who understands you who knows who mtu ako na makosa 50 and the only way I'll, I'll stay with him because of his 50 problems na nitakuwa naenda tu nikitoa nikipunguza pole pole as you move on because um i think people get into marriages without understanding what the Absolutely. marriage and you remember the way my dad and my mom uh, marriage was is not the same way uh, the next generation and my generation and even these young kids that are getting married right. now their marriages are totally uh, different so at that time um I'm lucky to have had a woman that understood me. Okay. And she she in a way told me, listen, if you want to do these things, do them in a certain way that it affect family yako. And and that's why I've I've stayed all this year still now. And that's why I wanted to get into the bones of the matter. I wanted to get to know you first yeah. because now you are an authority in the industry. Uh, you really can advise many people in the industry this is the way that you should go don't do this avoid these pitfalls and and you know the pandemic has happened yeah and and i know there is this all uh, hue and cry uh, unlock the country uh, artists are uh, the creative industry is suffering yes it is but also many other industries are suffering yeah and i do want to go to that directly before i allow my viewers to really get to know the the you how you started yeah. and where you are right now and you really are qualified to speak about the industry have you really been affected i think there is no one that has been affected more than the artist with with the with the lock up that was there um uh, the biggest problem that we have in in this country is artists are not we are not uh, we don't invest long term Uh, we are guys is it because of him you think it's it's, it's not because be there? of him it's because of the money the kind of money that we we earn in the industry you'll get 200,000 300,000 you know that that Again. kind of money yeah and that kind of money is not you cannot build with it so utajipata umeanza kulipa rent 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 you 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 get stuck on paying rent you know because this is the money that is coming you have a lifestyle to uh, that that you you're servicing because fame fame na lifestyle the, you service you live ni kama uko na loan your your fame you live servicing your lifestyle right so i think the biggest problem that i have seen right now is the, the most of the artists who are who are suffering and me included um is because people didn't think that, you know one day atutakuwa na gig bars will be closed so you didn't have your alternative Mimi kiliumana nikarudi hospitali I, I think I even invited you to my to my yes, clinic yes. in in uh, in Parkland Absolutely because I personally God had blessed me with something that I would have done apart from music. the music but there are people who don't have anything to do apart from music them it's it's and that's why no uh, nagasa ingine watu wana mtu anachangiwa hapa nje nasikia vibaya because I'm telling you there's a lot of money in music a lot a lot of money in music the problem is the people who make money out of music actually don't sing they're actually not musicians the people who are making money and minting a lot of money in this country are not guys who, who are, even so to are struggling in terms of money i uh, look at uh, calligraph whoever whoever artist whatever they are earning now it's an eighth of what they should be earning so producers behind the scenes guys are the ones not even producers is the guys who are doing business with music uh, I hold on to that because i think i want to go deeper into that topic yeah. the creative industry is what we're discussing today uh, no gigs are happening no gatherings are happening so many artists uh, actors musicians uh, are really really complaining and please after the break i want to get deeper into that this is the omen show best show in eastern central africa south of the sahara and north of limpopo see you after the break <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, thank you very much. Of course, this is the Omen Show, and I'm here with the great man, Mr. Amisi, otherwise known as Frasha Dakitare. Did I pronounce it well? Dakitare? No, it's Frasha. It has to. You only can find to what I enjoy. Frasha! Well, uh, before we took a break, we were talking about how the creative industry has been affected. Yeah. And we've seen on social media people saying, please unlock the country, we're suffering, gigs have been cancelled. And you said people are not making so much money. But be that as it may, money is still being made. So at least before the locking of the country and the pandemic, there was some money coming in to survive, to pay rent and to eat and all that, and maybe take your kids to school and all that. But now that's not happening. So there's poor planning. But allow me to put you on the spot, Mr. Frasher. As we are screaming, open the country, bring the gigs back together. How responsible also are we? Um, personally, I think if you follow me, I, I on my social media handles, yes. I talked a lot about us being responsible. Remember, <coughs> excuse me, um, when we were talking about unlocking our country, we were saying responsibly opening, unlocking the country, which which is already been done now. Right. Um, opening a country with guidelines. We were not saying that just open the country and there is no COVID. Yes, we know there is COVID. We know people are dying out of COVID. Uh, personally, I have seen friends and you know family uh, dying from from COVID. But again. We were about to die for cause of hunger because if there's there are no gigs, let me tell you one person who goes to a club, he goes to a club, uh, an achagarinje. The guy outside, the man in his car, depends on him. He gets inside, the bouncer, akimpeleka kwa kiti, but depends on him. The waitress depends. He goes to the loo, the, the guy there depends mm -hmm. on him. Maybe apo kwa club, apatana na kamutu nini, they depend on this one person. That's just one person. The DJ is, is depending on the guys who are coming uh, to the to the clubs. So what we were saying is that, yes, we understand this is happening, but how can we be more uh, understanding to that, to the extent of just opening a bit the country so that we can, back, we can make a little bit of money just to feed our families and to get on? Because we know it's downtime. It's, uh, it's not time to be rich now, uh, apart from if you want to be a COVID millionaire. Right. Um, but... It's time for us to learn and and move forward afterwards. And for us, we had no way of making money at all. And we know this thing is happening across the world, but every country is different and unique in its own way. And you cannot compare UK and tell us UK have been locked and us guys can be locked. UK have been locked, but they have been taken care of by the government. Here we, we are locked in, but there is no way of making even a single shilling because we depend on 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 our uh, on our uh, industry and so the cry i hope uh, it was hard i hope as we move forward things will get better people will be more responsible i have condemned shows before uh people who are doing gigs uh before um, like getting guys into parks and doing all these things i condemned it no social distancing no social distancing no mask because once you drink you get into a bar it's that use of it to the nature gapo too absolutely in between the the drinking so we are responsible enough uh, to know that this thing is there, but let's, let's also look at ways, uh, unique ways that nobody is being hurt and, and the economy is still growing. Because if you look at our neighbors, they've left us. And, and uh, if you want to look at the future, you have to look at what is happening now. In, in five years, Tanzanian, uh, Tanzanian music will be way ahead from Kenyan music and the kind of, the amount of money that will be evolving in their in their industry will not be compared to the one we are, we have here because here it's it's an stand still them they're still continuing they're producing they're making money the economy their the industry is still growing and so you can be sure in the future Kenyan music will have dropped but do you also attribute that to Kenyans not celebrating their own because to the truth be told is that there are foreign artists who are having 60 million views and and Kenya takes a big chunk of those views yeah. is it that we don't celebrate our own because if then we celebrated our own the way we should even in this moment where things are not as good some artists Kenyan creatives would still make money from some uh, payments from these uh, social media stations yeah. um, platforms would you say that could be one of the problems Th that I could say that could be a problem but Again, I'll go back to, to, to uh, the law. The law should protect the locals first. 
there is how no can the law force me to listen to you it doesn't now this is what happens for example uh, an, an, an idea an artist comes to kenya and is paid 10 million um, and a, a local artist is paid a hundred thousand the law can protect the local artist right. and give them a minimum of either 10 percent or 20 percent of what this guy has been paid if you look at uh, uh, social media whatever you're talking about royalties the law can still protect that whatever money is collected from from kenya only a certain amount can be uh, 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 given to the artists and we're not saying that we are not welcoming them kenyans will listen to whatever they want to listen but the law should protect the local artists the same way to knock wagana shida watu waki waki import uh, uh, viondo tuneza tuneza shona is the same way we should protect the the, the artists yeah. there's something you said also a, a, a few minutes ago that when these things happened you went back to your practice is there a problem when most artists get sucked into the fame and they don't think of having multiple streams of income whereby you only have one and when that is affected, then people are now dying. People are crying. And you know, some of these people are breadwinners. We have people who are single mothers. We have fathers who, you're a father of three. I mean, you have a teenager, an adult, 18, and a teenager and a young, and a young son. If you now did not have a fallback plan, so I want you to speak to that man, that lady, who was only depending on the gigs, that DJ, that creative, that rapper, that musician. What do they do from here? Even as the government has unlocked the country. Yeah, but uh, gatherings are still not happening. Yeah, uh, the most important thing is for anybody, for you to survive in this world, you have to change. You have to realize that any given time, any given point of your life, there is a change that happens in you. And if you don't change, uh, you, you will have a problem. Right. Um, so for me, I, I changed. I went into into physiotherapy, and I went there. I found myself hey, in Kashindwa. Uh, this is not me again. Like I couldn't feel that thing I used to feel back then, and so I I, I thought, what what else can I do? Also, you know, um, home physio can run. I can employ somebody to keep running and you know get something. What else do I do? And I got into farming, bro. Mbuzi machakos. I went in Kanuwa Mbuzi in Kaya Kanjua. Ilesi kukata umana. I'll go and pick my my goats. Come slaughter here one. We eat for a week or two weeks. Kituikiwambaya. Because that's how you're supposed. You must change. You must look at things. Okay, so to, tomorrow, if anything happens to me, I'm an artist, a big name outside there with no money. Uki tembe vim tani kila mtu akikwana na takapesa kutoka kwa. Nothing else. It's either a, a selfie. I'm a do. Mumbai yaki to Buddha to achie, and you don't have depression sinks in. Because your, your, your name is so huge, yet you have nothing to show for it. And I, I understand the people who get depressed. Uh, I think at some point I was also getting into depression because I was looking at my family and seeing that Malikana and Tashindwa ku provide Yawatu. And they have no power. It's me, it's me, I am their God in that house. If I don't provide for them, it's very hard for anybody else to come and provide. So. Um, I understand that music and being an artist on a kiburi, you know, there's that ego. For the first time, bro, I rode into in in uh, in Boda Bodas. I, I never used to do. In like when I join, I mean, hey, many fresher, bro. Says the panda matatu siju. Yo, bro, I got into all these things. I went into a matatu. I, I used to ride and do these. All these things happened because change. You have to change with the times that are there, with the surroundings that are there, and. Once you start changing, you start appreciating, uh, I think, situations and where God has placed you better. Because, hey, you know, this, you start complaining, uh, Sinai, at that time, I think COVID has humbled everyone. And people now has understand, it? I think so. Personally, it has, and right. it has made me understand that life, the, the one thing that I want to do is be alive. I don't even care. Sometimes I don't care about food. I just want to be alive. That's it. Uh, Frasha, are there people in the creative industry, and of course I don't want names to be mentioned, yeah. are there people, of course many look up to you, are there people who have gotten in touch with you and they're telling you, man, I, I don't know where my next meal is going to come from. I think I'm sliding into depression. It's big names. Don't mention anybody, but have you experienced such a situation? The funny thing, you asked me that because two days ago I was with someone, a uh, very big name, 
and he was we were discussing about because every day Simuyangu every day I will get five or six messages of guys asking for 200 100 shillings and these are artists they are people who have been in the industry and so we were talking and we were looking uh, we were discussing with this guy and uh, he's also a very big artist and he was telling me you know man like I'm also struggling you know and I don't know how these other guys are are, are working and we realized one thing as artists we don't have a welfare association. We don't have a place whereby uh, uh, for lack of a better term. So where do I go? Who do I seek help from? Oh, a Kenyan is idea. Oh, a Kenyan is idea. What happens? You're diluting our industry because if somebody, if, uh, if, if doctors, for example, me, I take a doctor and a musician at the same platform because um, there's something in, in medicine called arts in medicine, whereby they use um, musicians, art, uh, in, you know, to, to, to treat patients, you know, and not even to treat, like, uh, palati palati uh, palliative care yeah. for, for maybe cancer patients. You can use art, art, arts in medicine. And so a musician can be a doctor. But if you look at the way doctors are, they're, they're, they're structured, it's very easy for a doctor within a few years to own a car, to build a house. It's very, very hard for an artist to do that. And it's not because they're not getting the money. It's because the kind of lifestyle you're put into, the, kind, the amount of money you're given is for the lifestyle. I told you you can service your... When you, you're an artist and you let fame uh, get into your head, edge, uh, head you, <laughs> you, service your, you get to service your life. For the public. For the public. Have you learned your lesson? Not you, the industry. Even and, me. And people, okay, fine. People like you who, I would say, the godfathers of this industry. Are you thinking of ways and means in which you can come together? Because this situation may be with us for quite a while. Because even once we are off the hook, maybe 70% have been vaccinated, 80% and we have had immunity, the mentality of people coming into gatherings will still need to be dealt with. So you're looking at maybe two, three years, four years, you never know. Yeah. Have you, the godfathers of the industry, come together as much as you're discussing that? You see these guys asking for 100 shillings, 200 shillings, many going into depression. Many may even be suicidal. What is your plan going forward? Because many are watching you right now. And then there's a young boy who... Frasha mazendi umutu wangu, mina taka kurapka yeye, na ito adaktari ni mesoma na bado natakuwa kama yeye. But now they are seeing, hey, awa tukila siku ni kulia kwa mtandao. I think... Um there is something we've been doing. It's it's taken long. There's a uh, a union that we are working on for for creatives. It's not only artists. It's uh, all the creative dancers, because creative is it's a huge uh, it's a huge spectrum Absolutely. of of, of, ca of careers. So kuna dancers, DJs, kuna uh, art guys, uh, musicians, everybody. So there it's called CSK, and uh, we are still working on it, and hopefully. Um, I think in a few year, in a few months we should be up and running, but it has taken a lot of work because there are very many different people with different uh, problems because every industry has its own problems. For us to be able to have a body that will stick together all uh, all branches of of creative uh, has taken a while. But it's yes, we are working on something. But uh, yes, you are. But I'm gonna put you on the spot, Frasher. Yeah. We see that some artists, to be famous, have to abuse another one. Is that the way that you should go? That's, that's and could that be the reason why Bongo, Nigerian music, has gone far much ahead of us? Oh, is it? Yeah, because they have to Right. Because I think art is about competition, you know, and especially rap. Rap ni kutoa nisha uju nini weu na kaaje. That's what rap is. And having this clique going against this clique, that's that's what rap is. You know, that's what hip hop is about. But then again, after all that is said, that is the art outside. There are things that affect each hip hop artist, each Lingala artist, each Benga artist, that we need to come together and say, okay, so up and your tutapatania. That this is how we can help. If this industry has this problem, this is how we can help. If today taxes are put on music, uh, which are which are there because music is still taxed in this country, 
uh, even after atukua tunafanya kazi bado liko inataxiwa if the tax is increased every uh, every musician every uh, is is affected so we need to come together at that point and say okay so we are coming together because of one two and three things but this fighting in in fighting for me i have no problem with it because that for me is what heart is it's part of the game it's part of the game wow wanaume nimefundishwa leo kutokana na this part of the game <laughs> but behind the scenes you guys are cool very cool it's just like politicians so you're like Poli politicians the politicians will come one day or tukanane kesho wakaichini pamoja there is nothing to it and remember at uh, music people ask me at unaishi give even kwa video where ya the people who are acting uh, soap operas don't live the same way they live there in, in real life yeah in real life and the same as me uh, the, same, the same as artists so when you see me and as you what in a video and and think this guy rolls like this think think twice and kwanza hii time me I'm, i'm so i don't know this generation has a big problem because hold on to that thought we come back to this generation <laughs> he's a doctor he's a father he's an entrepreneur he's a creative wisdom is what is dropping see you on the other side of the break Well thank you very much for staying with us. This is the Omen show, a man delving into matters man. We bring men who have done major and mighty things in their life, men who will inspire, who will motivate, who will convict, who will mentor. And today we have the doctor. For those of you who are just joining us, he's a physiotherapist, he's a father of three, 18 year old, 16 year old and a 6 year old, married for close to 20 years. He is none other than Mr. Frasha. Is that how you supposed to say? <laughs> Nimejaribu hapo. Ah, nimejaribu. Wao wajumbe ni pasi. Well, we've been talking about uh, this generation yeah. trying to leave and we are really talking matters how the creative industry has been affected. And the truth of the matter is there are people struggling to feed their families. There are people struggling to pay rent. You understand? The other day a friend of mine took an Uber and found out that Uber driver is a creative and he was very impressed because that guy told him i have three others or i think four others of this and multiple streams of income you have told us here that uh, you had to go and i know your practice of course on, on back into physiotherapy and there are others now who only had one stream of income maybe it's a dj hana yeah. jobingine uh, rapper uh, creative is is, is a wide uh, yeah. it's a wide industry but there's something you said before we took a break they should not expect you to live that life they see on your videos you may have this big 4x4 four four car and they expect you to live like that yeah. but you when i interrupted you you had said ha huh, this generation what about this generation i think this generation has been put under a lot of pressure by who by social media um once for example today if you go on to for example your age mates right most of them uh, are not are not on so, on, on uh, social media right but this yani mimi mzee hivyo eh wewe ni mzee sawa na hata mkiwa hapo mna post vitu mko nazo gari yes. you know because over time you built yourself right? absolutely and so this the, the young generation right now and it's what you said about microwave uh, mentality of things happening instantly yeah there are some of them have done it you know they've been able to actually use microwave and things are moving in their lives and so there's a lot of pressure on their peers so somebody will uh, will do anything to get numbers and also again corporates have stopped look uh, stopped looking at values and start looking at numbers so for example frasha has value lakini ana numbers on social media ana numbers on social media so what do you do you tell frasha no 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 we'll not give you this gig so we give somebody else this person you're given what what is their content this guy maybe it's a lady kazi yake ni kwa mkasubui apiga akiwa kwa kahawa akuonesha paja kidogo saa sita eh, jioni you know you know how it's done on social media and so this person has already numbers and what is happening is corporates will start giving this other person money and fresher will stay here na hizo conviction zake na value system na value zake without money and so what 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 are you trying to tell me you're trying to tell fresher bro anza pia na paja pia wewe we, we, numbers increase because we've stopped looking at the core values of of people and looking at what numbers do they uh, attract 
and we don't look at the other side. So, so our e generation, all of them are under pressure because for them to do business, even artists, they don't have to do good music. They have to do music, and that's why um, I'm not saying gangeton is a bad it's bad music, but gangeton became famous because people wanted to listen to that kind of music. Absolutely. And so, if you tell this guy, at the change music, at a change age. And this is what is bringing bread. When he was doing this kind of music, he was not getting anything. But when he does music like this, people are coming. He has numbers. He has a million views uh, within within a month. So they'll keep doing the same thing. And so when corporates come in, they, they invest in this young, uh, uh, they, the whatever art they are doing, which I'm not saying it's wrong. But let's look at what values are we instilling in the next generation? And what pressures are you putting into, uh, uh, these kids into when they see... And they're still on the same age. You're telling this some this other person just because you believe in in your you know in morals and things, somebody else is doing something immoral and is getting gratification and nobody's uh, you know akuna conviction So I think there's growing up in this generation is the is the hardest thing to do. And then again, us and parents are still. You know, putting pressure on kids. For example, kama ni kusoma, shule, bado umepe umto ipe. Umto unapea pressure, anasoma na mtoto mungine ya nauleta kwa nagari kwa shule. Mtoto wako amena na matatu. There is a lot of pressure in this generation. From whatever, the way they are living, their social media lives. So for me, I think, hey, mean, this is a little time too poor. Any hey, time, ni, it's very hard to live uh, during this time. Do, do, you, do you agree with Mr. Frasher? Please engage us. It's triple one, triple four, triple one. Tell us what you feel. Is uh, this generation under a lot of pressure? Are we losing our value system? Another big question. Are the corporates also not helping in as far as the value system is concerned? But, Frasha, you've been in this game for very long. Mm. I mean, you have been in this game for, for, for very long. You have branded, rebranded, and you have the staying power. Now, people come and have become what you call a flash in the pan. Moto may come two years, I may potter. Yeah. Could this be one of those reasons? Because at Wesley and Galema Pajako Kilasiku, Tutachoka. Tapata wrinkles. Yes. Is that the reason then that we are not having people who have the staying power? And then what do we do about it then? Well, as I remember when I was telling you about the story of our P unit, we go together. Right. We had one motivation. One motive we had only one motivation to look at no motivate on poverty to look at attack to a ghetto. You know, we wanted to make it, we wanted to make money. There was nothing about fame, and we were the first guys I can tell you for a fact to be paid a million shillings Kenyan for a gig in Kenya. We were the first guys in Liskia Fiti. She didn't know personally, and what was your earning? Uh, game or level at that time do cost to 1 million uh around 500 600 also likwa sawa tu but now we were we were actually invested i don't think people do it now in a video and we paid more than uh, we went to south africa cape town right. to shoot a video for a song uh love which costed us more than 1.2 million excluding flights whatever accommodations all these things so there was money in the industry at that at, at that particular moment and that's why i say game yetu imeenda chini kidogo because tanzanians had nothing on us nothing in terms of uh, uh, entertainment if it's award we used to win more awards than them if it's my uh, charging for gigs we used to charge we used to go to tanzania like every weekend hakuna party ya tanzania tuko tunaenda mpaka uko kwa boda but with time, as time has gone, our industry, Gemetu Mendachini, Sana, and whoever is earning right now, and also COVID also came and then it can affect peer industry. So I think Kenyan, Kenyan industry, you know, need, people need to look at it seriously. Okay, Gemetu um, Yeah. Our lyrics may be bad. I mean, Kunangoma Miss was scared of Toyango. Very true. Uh, the same. Kuna uh, kama ya boys to men, I'll make love to you that always is kiza. But unaza is kiza, ni venye, imeekwa. Right. Swahili has a way, ishe ngetu ikona nje ya kuaribu, ya kuaribu vitu. Inaribu so luga, inaka chafu sana. Ukajaribu kuimbe yu, I'll make love to you, ni kiswahili utahepa. Uh, useme yu atasema. Uh, pole pasi. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I don't think it's content. 
music music as a way of getting to you regardless of whatever content is there absolutely uh, music it's an universal language whereby neza skiza ngoma ya french leo ama lingala tu benga whatever hii inapendwa na wazee sana rumba papa lolo rumba so you find that people are listening to rumba you don't understand whatever they are saying but it's it's music that's how music operates you don't have to understand whatever is in the music right. so i think in our production is where we, we started going wrong in producing uh, whatever music we were producing because even since it liko na imba mziki zilikuwa na vitu but msioka aki produce song anakwambia bro you cannot say that in the in a song auma ntai sensa una get as a producer so, so we need it, many musicians back in the industry yeah in terms of production yes right yeah wow let me ask you a question and and uh, and i'll put you on the spot remove yourself from this question because your earning capacity is 5 600 1 million maybe say unapata a million in bill so in a bit how a bit the question is can yeah. somebody and be very honest with me because somebody is watching there's a young boy who says i'm the next fresher there's a young boy saying i'll be the next big actor in this country i'll be the next big mc you understand can somebody genuinely fully wholly survive on the creative industry 100 when i mean survive you have a family you can buy a ca- let's say i told you the people who are making money are not musicians now i'm talking m- about the musicians the now, people on the front line wale uruka ruka hapo mbele wale ma msufanye hizo job now the problem with, with our country is i'll tell you for me being an artist there are five pillars of income um i hope i can remember all of them one is shows when you go for shows you have an income right two is merchandising you do a song you put uh, fresh and imkare you do uh, t-shirts t-shirts three royalties you're paid by from safari Co- uh, you're paid by sorry uh, you're paid from mcsk you're paid from prisk camp youtube whatever uh, other platforms you have four is uh, endorsements so you get a, um, a safaricom endorsing an artist you get an uh, endorsement from a one big uh, company um and the last one i've forgotten about it or sale of music so selling your music in terms of uh, uh, cd's selling uh, online sell so that's how you make money from from the industry now today i do a song uh, i do merchandise for example nikitoa t-shirt tao ziko 10 million mimi nimetoa 200 jamaa mwingine ndo anakula songs i release a cd today or online illegal sites jamaa mwingine anakula not me shows i go to a show an algerian artist comes or a tanzanian artist is paid whatever x amount i'm paid an eighth of that x amount pesa inatoka yetu nje tena i do um, endorsements i go to a safaricom yo you want to use my ini i give them a figure i they're like no 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 what value again they go back to the numbers fresh and is on numbers why is he telling us to give him uh, this kind of amount so you're not given at the end of the day as an artist you're making very minimal money that you would have made even 10 times and so that's why i'm telling you there are people who are building houses there are people who have built in karen with money from music na si zile za kuiba original mtu amepata pesa clean na ameenda amenunua nyumba and they don't sing because they've done business with music and so i think looking going forward and this is where i said it's very important for the government to protect the artists because we are fresh allow me exposed, yeah. uh, excuse me for interrupting you i know it's bad manners but we have cried for too long government do this government do this mm. but in my understanding of governance the world over governance governments don't really engage individuals or a fragmented group of people because you get some creative shouting on this side other shouting on this side there is no oneness of purpose yes. there is no oneness of message now surely for how long can we blame the government yeah. don't you think it's time as you say you need to fast track this uh, association that you are bringing together and then now you go as representatives of a bigger crowd yeah. very true what you said yes. um and i think it's it's been our problem it's not the government's but and that's why we are getting our house together because i know moving forward the problem that we've had is the the government will not engage with us because we are we are fragmented as you said but 
even if we have uh, if even if we have a, 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 a CSK for example mm-hmm. to to front all the creatives you know to the government to be able to speak to the government I think there are laws that affect us as 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 uh, as, uh, as artists um, for example I'll give you an example uh, something like skiza tunes we fought f- with skiza tunes for many years for them to increase the amount that they give the artist you can imagine selling a song at 10 shillings and getting 30 shillings out of that song and that song that 30 shillings is not yours it's you and the guy who was signed with safaricom they got they are called aggregators so there are people who are, the aggregator gets the 30 shillings and within the 30 shillings 70% goes to the aggregator and then now 30% of that 30 shillings is what the artist gets and you've worked so hard the song is yours you've done everything aggregator does not have a song he has a contract with safaricom skiza tunes um uh, safaricom are only give, willing to give you uh, 30% because they have their own uh, you know uh, things to cover so the artist with your big song with your big name you have no money. Wow. Well, I just pray that the creative industry 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 will come together as soon as practically possible so that you can move forward in upward mobility. And as I get to the tail end of this show, I want to get personal. Yeah. What next for you? I know leadership is not very far from you. Yeah. Um, first of all, I have a foundation. Uh, it's called the Frasher Foundation. I've been doing charity for the last... I think six years now. Um, what does it deal with exactly? Uh, I started doing autism, uh, helping guys with autism. I was the ambassador for two years for autism. Then I moved to, to working with uh, people with disabilities, with uh, also uh, Daddy Owen mm-hmm. at that time. Um, and now I'm doing a lot of children uh, children's homes in terms of providing food staffs and long-term uh, management of children's homes. Um, I've been everywhere. I've been, I've been to Mombasa, Nairobi, name it, I've, through Kana, Kisumu, uh, doing charity. And one thing that I learned is that um, I can be able to do this, but if I want to really help, I need to get into power. Because I will tell you, for example, um, I, got, I got a tuk-tuk from uh, one of our sponsors. The sponsor got, uh, because of politics, they, were got, they, they got thrown out of this country uh, from doing business. These guys were able to um, s- uh, support my foundation, and my foundation was supporting a lot of people somewhere in my chakos uh, with, with whatever I was getting. So for me, I, I came to see if you are not in power, if you, we, if you don't, as young people and as young, especially creatives, and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm complaining. People, they, the industry does not have money. The industry, the, the music industry does not have money where we can be able to come in and support and help people machinani vizuri kama unataka kusaidia we have to get into power we have to get into politics we have to get into positions and we have to get if it's for example i got into machakos um, i was the director for youth in machakos county uh, his excellency governor mutoa had given me a position in 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 machakos and i could not deliver what he wanted me to deliver because there were no structures at, at that moment to help me uh, achieve my goals. So are you saying here on the Omen show that Mr. Amisi yeah. is going into politics? I am definitely going into politics. Uh, I'm following my father's footsteps also. My dad was a politician. Um, I will get into politics. And people ask me, so unengi uko ndi ukaibe kama hawa tu wengine? Misingi kuiba. Most of my friends, some of my friends are politicians. Mm. And I can tell you, our genocide, I mean, personally, they don't help me. But I know the work they do on the ground. And me, I have a calling. I've been, you know, I've been helping people all throughout. Now, come on, do. As a neighbor, I don't know, bro. Like, I think the, the kind of upbringing, uh, where? Yeah, m- but and my dad my dad is also like a witness he was in politics and he was a clean politician and we can be clean politicians and moving forward this country i think we need people who have integrity kama una integrity mimi hata kama kuna mali nimeshikwa mtu atakuja aseme nilitoka nikaenda nikafungwa we must have people with integrity people who have been given public 
uh, resources to handle and they handle them well they handled them well na, na, na kuna track record mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> well i wish you all the best Thank i'm you. not going to ask you which position you're going for but you're going into politics we wish you all the best and i hope when you get that position we shall keep you to account umesema hawendi kuiba unaenda kusaidia watu servant leadership servant leadership all right well ladies and gentlemen this has been the old man show and by the way i hope last week you took your mothers out you send your mother a beautiful message appreciating all the mothers and for those mothers who are not appreciated we want to tell you god bless you uh, we honor you because they say if you give a man a fish he will feed the family but if you give a woman a fish she will fill the whole world so to all the mothers happy belated mothers day we appreciate you because we are who we are because you are who you are Mr Frasher what is the most interesting thing that you own The most interesting thing that I own is uh, I think PS Napenda PS sana mimi What is your favorite sport to watch Football What compliment do you receive most Hey you have a nice smile given the option excluding music and medicine what other career do you think you would have pursued Farmer Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant Kobe Bryant What is the one fundamental thing you have learned about being a father to your young children that uh, there is no manual for being a father when did you first realize you had a passion for music i think when i was born if you had a chance to change something from your past what would it be poverty using one word what would you associate the word success with family what advice can you give young artists trying to get into the music industry don't try to be like me be yourself thank you very much god bless you get out of the chair now. <laughs> Well, this has been sasa hapo tunaimaliza pamoja. This has nezambia madangu mare. Uh, please mwambie. Mwa uh, nezongea kikamba. Ongea. Nya kwa niende kutabia ni thank you mno kwa kuntiana kuumbeka na sondo ni kalete huu na kuumbisha si aundo ni ni kalete. Kwa kizungu ama kwa Kiswahili unasema nini? Kwa kizungu? Eh uh, mom I would like to say a big thank you for helping me become the man that I am today and for always guiding me. God bless you na nakupenda sana. Now let me say to my mom in French. Ha <laughs> bonjour madame. No anyway mom, I do love you. I appreciate you and I honor you. Well, I am your host, your friend and your coach Robert Broale and this has been the Oh man, man show. show. Thank you very much and see you next week.